In today's video, I'll be taking you for a scenic walk between two villages through a valley, wildflower meadows, and along a river in the northern part of the Yorkshire Dales. With its picturesque natural landscape and splendid view, it is worth every step throughout the walk. This is Upper Swaledale. The walk started from the village of Keld, where we parked our car. The streets in the village are narrow and parking are mostly reserved for the residents. However, there is a large car park available in a farmyard with suggested parking charges, which on the day of our visit were £3 for all day and £2 for short stay. An honesty box is provided and only accepts cash payment. A row of toilets, showers, and pot washing facilities is also available at the parking site. If you want to know the route of this walk, you can find it in OS Map OL30. There is a signpost opposite the car park indicating the direction of the walking trail, and all succeeding walking points are easy to follow. Follow the path until you reach a signpost indicating the Penine Way and Swill Trail, which leads downhill. The path is quite steep but is stable underfoot, although care should be taken in wet weather. At the bottom is a bridge which crosses over the river Swale. The right of the trail is where you will find East Gill Force, which is where East Gill runs into the river swale. There are two sections to the force. The lower section is a series of step cascades, while the upper falls have a drop of 15 feet. There are three other waterfalls in this area. Kisdon Force, Catrick Force, and Wainworth Force. The reason they are called Force is from the Norse word Foss, which means waterfall. Isgill Force is a nice picture spot, almost hidden away from the main trails. We carry on with the walk by walking uphill and turning right. The signpost indicating the direction towards Rumsholm. At this part of the trail, you will slowly notice the view of the valley. Following the broad track, we pass by some old stone buildings as well as the remains of an old tractor which must have been here for many years. As we continue to walk, the view along the valley opens up and it was worth stopping for a few minutes to appreciate the scenic surroundings. We pass by the remains of Crockpot Hall. These are the ruins of a farmhouse from the mid-18th century. Although it is believed that there may have been a building on this site, since the 16th century, the farmhouse was abandoned in the 1950s due to subsidence and is today safe for further deterioration by the Gunnerside Estate. The track then follows the contours of Buzzard Scar and turn left along Swiner Gill. The path is narrow and steep. In one place, there has been a small landslide and the path has been eroded and has some large borders in the way, but it's still possible with care. The path descends leading to the old lead mine buildings and smelt mill by crossing over a small stone bridge. 
There's also a waterfall that runs down to the river's well, which was once the water wheel used in the lead mining activities that died out in the late 19th century. From the old lead mining site, you can continue walking uphill all the way to Gunnerside Hill. But we decided to walk along the same side of Swiner Gill, but this time on the lower path towards the river. From here, there are views of the gill as it works its way down to the swale, with a number of small waterfalls along the way. The path winds towards the gill and crosses the water at these rocks, before ascending along the opposite side of Swiner Gill. The view back up the gill is nice, with some more small waterfalls and a view along Swaledale. The area along this section is very steep and the path was rocky underfoot, with some loose stones, so care should be taken. As we walk down towards the valley, you will see the river swale and the puth path between Keld and Muker. The path then descends into the valley floor and joins the puth path along the river swale. This is flat and easy to walk along with plenty of views of the river. Most people take this route between Keld to Muker or vice versa, so expect that it can be busy sometimes. This part of walk gives you a closer view of the opposite side of the river. Eventually, the path divides so we follow the sign indicating Muker, which crosses over a footbridge. Many people take their break at this part of the river as you can sit on the riverbank or some rocks and watch the river flow by. You can paddle in the river but please be careful as the rocks can be slippery. If you decide to take your meal by the riverbank, please make sure to take your rubbish with you as there are no bins in the area. Then we turn left to walk through the white flower meadows. These meadows are not just a pleasant sight for walkers and visitors. Indeed, these are hay meadows which are used to provide winter food for cattle. In these meadows, you will notice the flag path and it is important to stay along this route when passing through so as not to damage any of the crop. The best time to view the flowing meadows is in late May to early July, where you can see the different types of flowers and plants such as pignut, self hill, wood queen's bill, melancholy thistle, and meadow buttercup, as well as the grasses which will provide the hay once harvested. Some of these meadows are part of the Mucor Meadows site of special scientific interest and the Northern Pennine Dales Meadows Special Area of Conservation and as such are of international importance. The village of Muker is at the end of the path and is characterized by the traditional 18th to 19th century stone barns and houses, typical of Swildale. A cluster of houses lead down to the main road where the village store, pub and art gallery are located. The Church of St. Mary the Virgin is located to the east of the village and was built in 1580, making it one of the few churches to be built during the reign of Elizabeth I.
After exploring Mucur, we retrace our steps through the meadows back towards the river swale and follow the signpost indicating the direction to Kel. Towards Kilt is mainly along the river, so it's a very straightforward direction. We walk through some open pastures and woodland tracks. It was again a scenic walk as you can see the top of the hill where we walked earlier and a different perspective of the valley. This walk is one of the most beautiful and spectacular walks in the Dales that we have done with the highlights being the amazing views from Crockpot Hall and the hay meadows of Mucur. Since this is a circular walk, we headed back to Keld by following the trail as indicated on our map and it was a straightforward direction. then arrive at the junction above the river swale where we started the walk. From the junction, we continued our walk until we can see the village of Keld. There is a tea room and small shop at Park Lodge which is open during the spring and summer and it's a good spot to sit and enjoy an ice cream or tea and cake. It may be a long walk for some but Upper Swale Dale offers a unique and spectacular view that you can only find in the Yorkshire Dales. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, comment, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more getaways with Noel. Thank you for watching.